Yo, 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 welcome, I'm your man Nar. In this video, I will show you how to create sticky vertical menus on WordPress and Elementor free. No need to have Elementor Pro or any paid plugins for that matter. However, you will have to do some work manually. But hey, who said manual work is bad? So let's start. If you create or run a website and want to improve it, then my channel and website is for you. Head over to my website, yourmanar.com, and you will find tons of informative content, tips and tricks, ready-made websites with complex functionalities for sale, and most importantly, discounts for the best tools to improve your website's performance. Enjoy this video. I hope it will be valuable for you. As always, I'm your man Nar. All right, welcome to the tutorial. So right now I will show you how to create a sticky vertical menu on WordPress and Elementor using only and only free plugins and free tools. Uh, so I will also have a link in the description of the video to the written form of the, of the same tutorial. So for whatever reason, if you don't like watching videos or it's not comfortable for you, you can head over there and read the process. This is the article. I have everything written step by step in details. Uh, so you can head over there as well. So the steps are the following. Install the necessary plugins, create the menu, set the column structure and width, design the vertical menu, add a sticky property to it because we want the menu to stick to the top of the page, and then copy and paste the menu wherever is necessary. So this requires a bit manual work, but hey, we're using free plugins, so we have to have some manual work over there. So here are, the here are the necessary and required plugins to do the following tutorial. So first of all, obviously it's Elementor, the free version. Uh, we have sticky menu or anything on scroll. So using this plugin, uh, we can stick the element, the, the I mean the header, the, the menu to the top of the page. So this is the plugin that's required. And then the third one is either one of the following. It's either HT Mega Absolute Irons for Elementor Page Builder or Elementor Header Footer and Blocks. Any of the, any of the two plugins really work. I will uh, use the, the following plugin in the tutorial, but you can have the other one as well. So it doesn't really matter. I have four of them installed. You can see over here, I have Elementor, the free version. I have Elementor Header Footer Builder, I have the Mega Absolute Add-ons, and I have Sticky Menu or anything on scroll. So let's start with the, so this is this was the first step, I have them installed, and then I will have to create the menu. So head over to your WordPress dashboard, go to Appearance Menus, okay? I have my menus already, so I'm using, I'm showing the tutorial on my live website. Uh, so I will have to create a new menu, the same as you. So create create a menu, create a new menu. The name is Vertical Nav Menu. Of course, you can have any name in here, just as long as uh, you will identify it easy, easy, easily. Okay, now we will have to add pages to the Vertical Navigation Menu. Here you can see that we can add any item that we want. We can have categories, custom links, products, posts, but I will have add pages, articles, discounts, my favorite tools, ready websites. So these four pages are fine. Add to menu and save menu. So we have the new, new menu. And for the third step, I will have to set the column structures and width. Uh, so I will have to go to pages. I have created Two test pages for the sake of this tutorial, it's vertical menu tutorial and test new page for navigation menu. So edit vertical menu tutorial. As you can see, my website already has a header, so I will have to disable the header on this page. So I will go to Nivi theme settings and disable header. So if you're using another theme other than Nivi, uh, I'm sure that your theme has the option of disabling the header. So you have to disable the header because you want the header to be vertically. So, and then we will edit with Elementor. We will add two structures, uh, one structure with two columns. Okay, one section with two columns. We'll go to the left column and we will go, we will set the column width to 30. So you can have it any other dimensions. You can have it 25. 
you can have it 35. It doesn't really matter, but from my experience, 30% 30 30 is really good to have the vertical menu. So you can see that you cannot see right now, but we will see later that 30% is good. So here we will have the content of the page and here we will have the menu. And then I will add some settings for the main section. Advanced. You can see that here link values together. I will unselect this so we can edit every part separately and I will change via percentage. So from the left, I want 5%, from the right, I want 5%, from top and bottom, I want 3%. So I just added some padding so that this way it looks way nicer. So this was the structures basically. Now for the fourth step, we will have to design the vertical menu. So let's update this so we don't lose anything. Always update it. Although uh, Elementor says the version, but updating is always good. So I will add an image in here. So the image will be used as the logo of my website because this is the only menu that the user is gonna see. So that's why I have to add a logo because every website has a logo, right? So that's the right thing to do. Then I will go to the struct, to the widgets. I will search for menu. I've already did that actually. And I will add navigation menu HFP, which stands for header footer blocks. Okay, so it's the Elementor header and footer builder. So I will drag it and drop it below the image and then I will go and search for social, social icons and drag and drop it just below the menu as well. So this is the structure that I want the, my menu to have. So it's my logo, the menu items that I want and the social sharing and uh, following icons so the user can go and find me on social media. So this is the main structure. Now I will go and design everything uh, separately. The first thing is the image. The first thing actually is the column itself. So I want to go to the column style. I want to have the background color, okay? My main color. So it's C602. So this is the color that I want. Uh, you can see that the menu items disappeared. They didn't actually disappear. It's just both of them are the same color. So we will change the, we will change the colors afterwards. And then I will go to advanced. I will unselect these. I will have pixels. Then select 10% to the left margin, 10% to the right margin. So this way it gets uh, thinner and it looks way nicer. 3% from top, 3% from bottom and 3% from bottom, uh, top. And the same thing for padding. I want the content to be padded to the left, top uh, three from bottom and three from top. So this is how I want the structure to be. Now I will head over to the image, select image. I will add a logo. Uh, because I don't have a certain logo, I will add my image. I will take it to the left. The size, I want it to be 120 width. So this way it doesn't look oversized on different sizes of screen. So it looks compact and beautiful. For the style, I have nothing, nothing to add. I will go to advanced and I will go to the mask. Turn the mask on and to shape circle. So it has a circular mask on the image. Update. Now let's design the menu. Uh, I will select the menu to the menu that I had just created, vertical nav menu. And the layout I will set to, let me change the color so you can see what I'm doing. Content, so it was on, on this before that. Now I change it to vertical navigation menu. Okay. Now, if, if you look at it on full screen, you can see that they're not vertically aligned. They're horizontally aligned. It just doesn't have enough space to add the other one here. So I will come here, layout, and change the layout from horizontal to vertical. So this way, on different, different sizes, uh, on different sizes of screens, it will still look vertical. And I will style it. I will go to normal white. On hover, I want it to be a little bit gray. So CCCC really is nice. I will copy CCCC and use it for my active color as well. So whenever the user is on any of the pages in the menu, he will see it in a, a grayer color. So that way he knows where he's at or she knows where she's at. Now let's edit on the mobile. So on the mobile, you can see the, that the burger menu is dark gray. I want the burger menu to be white. And on the hover, I want it to be, of course, the same gray that we, we added to the text. Now, 
we'll do the content and align the uh, burger menu to the left because we don't want it in the left in the middle just like everything else is on the left we want it to be in the left as well or maybe you can have it in the middle now let's have it to the left let's have it to the middle actually uh, then for the when we open it we can see that the background is white so we want to edit that as well so in the style drop down I want to have the background color, my red, C602.02. Don't use my red, guys. Use something else, okay? So this way, it looks way, way, way nicer. So update. Let's head back to the desktop version. Now we want to customize the social media icons. So to style, official colors, custom. We don't want no officiality over here. We want only custom stuff. So the primary color, set it to transparent. And the secondary color to white. Right, so this looks nicer and on the hover I want the primary color to stay transparent and the secondary color to be the gray that I just added. So this is it, we have the menu, it really looks nice. Don't forget to add the links to your social media icons if you're gonna use it. Of course you want to point out to your social media page, facebook.com, your page. Okay, so I will not add it right now but don't forget to do that as well and let's align it to left as everything was aligned to left update so we designed the menu we added the structure so this is the vertical menu that we want to add for the sake of the example let me add some content to the right as well so some text some titles some buttons uh, i will do this as page one content so it's lauren ipsum it doesn't really matter i will add the section two uh, put have the same copy, uh, I will right click here, copy and pass the style in here. Okay, so we have the same paddings and everything and I will go to the column and add it as 30 because whenever this menu is ticked to the top of the page and is it, you don't want this menu to come over the content that's below it. So you don't want the content to overlap. So that's why we, we will add columns on every other section that we're gonna add and just leave it empty so they don't overlap. And here I will just add a spacer, just so you can you can see that it's not sticky right now. 2000 pixels, update, and let's preview the changes. I hope everything's good so far. So you can see that it's not sticky and we're scrolling. So all is good right for now. We have the menu, we have the page, we have the content. So what we're gonna do right now is add a sticky property to the uh, vertical menu. So what we have to do is left click on edit column or right click and edit column. So it's the same thing and go to the advanced tab. You can see here advanced tab, then advanced and we will have to add a CSS class to it. So I will add sticky dash menu. So you can add whatever name you want to add. Just make sure you don't use spaces and it's a best practice to add lower cases. So don't use dots, you only use dashes and don't use space. So update. I will copy this name and then head over to my WordPress dashboard, go to settings and sticky menu or anything. Okay, so we did the fourth step. Now we're adding a sticky property to it. So in the sticky property, I will write in the dot and pass the name of the CSS class that I added to the column. So a dot and the name of the CSS class. So if I added here, let's say Narek or whatever I added, I will have to add the same name in here. So this tells that I want this element, this CSS, this class, so the column to stick to the header. So I will just save the changes, head over here, refresh the page, and now you can see that the magic really works. Wow. Isn't it nice? So it's working. So it's stick to the header. And this is really it. So this is how you create a sticky vertical menu. So uh, let's just have some edits in it. So you can see that it's touching the footer. So I don't want that to happen. Uh, so if you don't want to th that to happen, you will have to go advanced settings and push element optional. So in this case, you will, add, you will have to add a CSS class to the footer, to the entire footer. 
and then add the CSS class in here. So hashtag footer or dot footer, it doesn't really matter as long as you have the CSS, uh, right? So whatever the name of uh, you give to the footer, you will have to add it in here. I will not do it right now because it will take some time or actually I will do it. I will go to appearance, either at footer builder, because I don't want you guys to skip anything or to think that the tutorial is not complete. Uh, if, if you don't want to see this part, you can just skip, let's say, uh, 30 or one minute ahead and you will see the continuation of the video. So in this settings, edit section, advanced, I will write footer, update, sticky menu, footer, this should work, vertical menu, refresh, Okay, so you can see it, it didn't overlap, it stayed where it had to. So this this is really more professional and it really looks way nicer. So uh, my conscience is good that I did the right thing and I showed everything and it only took us like a few seconds. So let's continue. Uh, now we will have to copy and paste this on every page that we want the vertical menu to appear. So I have just added one test new page so because I want to show this on this test page only, uh, you will have to do it on every single page that you add to. I will disable the header on this page as well. Edit with Elementor. Now it's really, really easy, but the thing is that what well, if you make a single change on the main menu, you will have to make the change on every single page that you added. So all I had to do was right click on this section, copy and come in here and paste it as is so. And I will have to change the content over here. So it's page two, content of the page two. And I will add a new section to columns. Uh, I will have this 30. I'll copy this section settings and pass style in here. So we have the 5% padding from the left and the from the right as well. And here I will add the content of this page two. So this an image, so let's say we add something else. We add, uh, let's say image carousel. Now we added an image, let's say, let's say star rating. So whatever it is, so whatever you add. So update it and then edit the column and make sure in the advanced, advanced tab, every single vertical menu that you have has the same CSS class that your main has. So that way all of them are sticked to the top of the page. Update, preview. So you can see it's sticky, it sticks and it doesn't stick on the footer. So it stops when the footer arrives. So this is basically it guys. It's really simple, it's really fast. The only thing that, that's, that somehow a drawback is the manual work that you will have to do in the copy and pasting. So one of the pros is that it's really free and it's really customizable. Like you can customize if you want, let's say the menu, which is not a big best practice, but let's say for whatever reason, you want your menu to look different on uh, every other page. So you can have it like this on this, uh, using this system, I would say. And so it's flexible. And the cons are that you need the manual work. You will have to update everywhere. So whenever you have change something on the main menu, you will have to copy the change and pass it on everywhere else. Uh, so that's a drawback. And so that makes the error margin really, really bigger than if you had, uh, let's say, changed one place and it would have changed everywhere else. But for, to do that, you need paid plugins. This is the free version. And this is how you create a vertical sticky menu on WordPress and Elementor using only, only free plugins. So this was the tutorial. If you liked it and you find it useful, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. That really helps. Uh, and see you in the next video. This was it. Easy, right? Right. I hope this was helpful. And now you will be able to create beautiful vertical sticky menus for your website. See you next time. Cheers.